Great question. I love that. So if we, if we kind of rewind back to the beginning of the week, um, and just think about, remember we talked about that tilt table test, so the, the symptoms that you've been having or have been having before that all came after you had your hit, right? After you got injured. And then, so think about it that way, it's probably unlikely that it was related to something other than the injury. So you'd already done kind of the salt loading and you'd already done some of the exercise techniques, you'd already done the, the hyperhydration stuff, making sure you have enough water as ways to try to combat your symptoms, but it's, you know, some, just kind of doesn't do the thing all the time. Um, the reason why is because we're looking at a brain injury, right? So when you first came in, remember we checked and made sure that those symptoms you were having, you know, the, you know, the fogginess, the blurring your getting in your vision, kind of some of that phobia, and then looking at just the fog and the malaise that that the trouble just kind of getting up and getting after it. Um, you know how you're getting fog, you're doing your homework, and then you're doing you know, trying to go just exercise, do simple exercise, stuff like that, right? So we did that tilt table test. I'm just grab the table right there, and right. And we measured your heart rate and your blood pressure at each interval. We were kind of looking at how your brain responds to that change in gravity, because normally it should be nice and quick. Uh, one of the primary jobs of that autonomic system is to make sure you keep adequate blood in your head, which is kind of, kind of a big deal. Um, so we did that and kind of confirmed that your autonomic system is, is, was for sure involved, right? And then we did that test where we looked at some of the things that your eyes were doing. Remember, it's, it wasn't something that you could feel, right? It's kind of weird. Um, you don't really know what's happening, but when you watch it happen on the screen, you can see it's, it's for sure happening. And with that thing we saw with the drift and the way your eyes were having a hard time being able to hold on to the target, we know that there's a certain part of your brain, the cerebellum we talked about, that is in charge of those things. And it's also in charge of doing a lot to regulate your autonomic system. So we see a lot of times in people like you that have injuries in that cerebellum that they also have a hard time being able to regulate that ability to kind of shunt blood where you want to go, control your heart rate, control your breathing, control your blood pressure, um, and all your hormone things that come with that as well. So those are all related. Now it's kind of a it's a little bit of a vicious circle in a way because when you have a head injury, we really lean on our autonomic system to be able to protect our brain um, from increased pressure within our skull. So that autonomic system also helps to make sure that the cerebral autoregulation stays stable so that we don't get hydrocephaly. We also don't get changes in the, the hemodynamics. So that we get into some of those foggy aspects and energy usage and things. So we know that when we look at that function that's happening, we can localize it to that part of your brain and cerebellum. Um, that when we go and do the things that we did and some of those treatments that we did, that we can improve how that cerebellum works. How, especially that little portion that we saw, um, it's kind of right in the middle. Um, the name's not super important. Um, that it's a focular nodular area, and that has to do with helping you with controlling kind of a stable sense of where your head is in space, but it also helps to be able to stabilize a lot of the movements you have and to influence your autonomic system. So by doing those exercises, we can actually see that that area starts to stabilize and gets a little bit stronger, which is why we can come back and do those tests again, and see they're normal, or they're, you know, they're moving toward normal. Your, your heart rate doesn't have to be at 120 beats per minute, right, to be able to keep your blood pressure stable. Right? You can stand up and sit down without getting dizzy. You can be able to have just kind of a normal, stable, excuse me, normal, stable heart rate and blood pressure, but be able to have those at the same time without it really taxing the system. So we know that that part of the brain, if it's able to work a little bit better, your system can handle being taxed a little bit more because it's not uh, having to it, it gets the full, the full function or the full sense of orientation from that part of the brain, if that makes sense. Yeah? Awesome, thanks.